In step two, you'll be answering questions and making comparisons that will ensure that your dividend information is reported correctly. Information on distributions, which are often called dividends, may impact your cost basis and ultimately your capital gains and losses. Final tax information on them often doesn't show up until you receive your 1099. Changes are not something that is made automatically for you by AccountSync. It's important that you address anything that needs to be adjusted in your records based on what they show. You may see notes on your dividend information that describe qualified dividends. What is that? Well, it's a good thing. They qualify for a reduced tax rate. For most people, they are taxed at long-term capital gains rates rather than at ordinary income rates. There are certain requirements for a dividend to be considered qualified. Only U.S. and certain foreign companies can issue qualified dividends. Only certain types of dividends are qualified. Dividends from money market accounts are usually not. Neither are dividends from REITs. There is a holding period requirement. You need to have owned the stock paying the dividend for more than 60 days during the 121 days that begin 60 days before the ex-dividend date. What's an ex-dividend date? Well, when a dividend is declared by a company, they also specify that it will be paid to owners of record as of a certain date. The stock exchanges determine who they are by establishing an ex-dividend date. It's usually two business days before the record date. If you buy and own a stock before the ex-dividend date, you get the dividend. If you buy it on or after that date, you don't. Bivio runs a holding period check based on information entered on the ex-dividend page that you will complete in a minute. It's important to understand that brokers don't have to run this check. All they have to do is tell you if a dividend is eligible to be qualified. You may find that this will mean that the amount of qualified dividends reported by Bivio is different from what your broker shows. If you see differences, make sure you know why, but if there's a good explanation, it's okay. In a tax program, the dividend review section starts here. On this page, you need to make sure you have investments correctly identified as those that pay qualified dividends or those that do not pay 100% qualified dividends. Those are the ones like REITs, ETFs, and many mutual funds. Their distributions are often not just dividends and may end up having to be split into several different parts. We'll be showing you how to do this later. How do you know how to answer a question on this page? Well, here's a clue. If you see something like this on your 1099 DIV, it means that this investment pays not 100% qualified dividends. As you can see here, for this ETF, the total dividends have been split into an ordinary or a non-qualified portion and another portion that's eligible for qualified status. You can open the little drop-down box for a company if you need to change its designation. Next, you'll be asked to verify ex-dividend dates. Ex-dividend dates are used to do the final holding period check that we talked about earlier. We fill in a default entry, which is the date closest to the date you receive the dividend. Make sure that they look okay. For a particular company, they should all be different and they should be close in time to the transaction time of when you got the dividend. If you want to double check anything, there's a website called DividendInvestor.com that will show you ex-dividend dates. Next, you'll come to our 1099 DIV review report. This is what it will look like. For each company, you'll see a list of each of the dividends that you've entered in Bivio. Most brokers provide a corresponding detail that you can compare this against. We'll look at that in a minute. You'll be able to do a quick initial check by comparing the dividend totals for each company to what is shown on your 1099. If the totals don't agree, you can compare each detail to determine where the discrepancy lies. If you need to make any changes, you can find a direct link back to your records to edit the transaction. 
You'll be checking the Vivio information against dividend detail information, which you can probably find on your 1099 DIV. Many look like this, which you can see is very similar to the Vivio review page. Or you may find the same information in a little different format. In either case, this is what you do. First, look at the dividend totals and compare them to the Bivio report. Then, compare all the other details with the Bivio report. Most entries should compare pretty easily. What you need to be concerned about is information like the entries for this company, where some of the distributions have been classified as something other than dividends. In this case, some of the dividends that were paid by Frontier Corporation were reclassified by the company after they closed their books for the year. Only part of the amounts received during the year could be considered dividends. The rest was a return of capital. It is called a non-dividend distribution. This will mean that adjustments will need to be made to your Bivio records before you can file your taxes. In cases like this, you need to find the stock in question on the Bivio 1099 DIV review report, and you'll need to select the edit link on one of the dividends. This will open the dividend entry form, and you can split the entry into each of the components shown on the 1099, one for the dividend portion and one for the return of capital. The total of the two should be the same as the original dividend received. The return of capital entry is very important. Even though that income is not taxable to you during the current year, it does affect the cost basis of your shares. If you don't make these entries, you will overpay on your taxes during the current year and your cost basis will not be correct when you sell your shares. When you return to the 1099 DIV review page, you will now see two entries for the distribution rather than one. You should continue to make adjustments until all changes have been made in Bivio. Some other things you might find on 1099 DIVs that would require adjustments include these. Sometimes an end of year dividend is received and entered in Bivio with a date early in the new year, but on the 1099 it is classified as a past year dividend. If you see this, you need to adjust the date the dividend was received so it is reported in the correct tax year. If you own foreign stocks, you may see entries where foreign tax was withheld on your 1099. You need to make sure these entries also show up on the Bivio 1099 DIV review page. If your club owns REITs, their distributions usually need to be split into several parts. First, dividends from REITs are not eligible for qualified status. They also might make return of capital distributions, or part of their distributions may be classified as capital gains. These breakups can mean you'll have to edit your Bivio records to make two or three entries where only one dividend entry had been made during the year. You also need to make sure that any REITs are identified as not 100% qualified on the first screen. You won't know these breakdowns until you get your 1099s. In fact, your 1099s may be delayed or you may receive revised ones late in the tax season. Since you can't do your taxes correctly without the information, it may delay your filing. The delay and the extra work of splitting up each of your distribution entries into several parts is one of the reasons that we advise clubs to avoid investing in REITs. Even more complex than that will be the issues that you will face if you own commodity ETFs such as SLV or GLD. These are actually investments in a commodity, gold and silver, not in stock. Each month, some of the commodity, in this case silver, is used to pay expenses. These sales mean many calculations that must be made manually and many adjustments that you would have to make to your Bivio records. There are manual adjustments to your tax forms that are also required. Unless you want to spend lots of time and are very comfortable doing calculations and making accounting entries, 
You will not want to do what needs to be done if your club invests in these. Finally, if you see information like this on your 1099, you have a big problem. You've received income, which is classified as a partnership distribution. This requires major adjustments to your club accounting and tax reporting. Unfortunately, handling these things is beyond the scope of the services provided to you by Bivio. You'll need to get an outside accountant to help you get your taxes done this year. Fortunately, most clubs keep things simple and don't have to deal with REITs or partnership issues. For regular stocks, if you're using AccountSync and doing a quick cash balance check each month, you'll find that your dividends will line up quickly with what your broker is showing and you'll be able to breeze through your tax preparation. If you have a question about reconciling your Bivio records with your 1099s, please email us a copy of your 1099 along with your question. Do not try and type details into your email, but do identify the stocks that you have a question about. We can work on things most quickly if we can look at what you are looking at. If you need a phone call, again, still email us your phone number and two or three times when you might be available for a call. Also let us know your question and your club name. Thank you for coming. We're looking forward to helping you work through a simple and stress-free tax season.